Hello and welcome to World Plan Day 2023. Now we have Victor Fernandez de Alba with us to talk a bit about the past, present and future of Voto. Uh, Victor, can you introduce yourself and your uh, history with the Plan community quickly, just quickly. For, the, for the two human beings that do not know you yet? Quickly is difficult, but yeah, I will try. Uh, yeah, I'm Victor Fernando de Alba. I have uh, been working in Plone since 2005 ish, something like that. So it's almost, yeah, it's going to be 20 years and soon. Uh, I've been involved in a, yeah, a bunch of things through the years, starting with uh, Plone. Uh, from five, uh, Barcelona theme, then from a PP multilingual, uh, yeah, a lot of other things. And lately, I, uh, I, I took, uh, yeah, the, I mean, the, the, let's say, uh, the lead on the front end development for the new UI present in Plum 6, Volt, called Volto. I'm currently the release manager for uh, Volto in the community. I've been serving in the board for uh, many years. Uh, been member of teams here and there. Yeah, and that's it. I will stop. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, I I know you for quite 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 a long time, and um, I was always amazed by the quality of your work. And uh, at some point, I am out of the Prone community for a few years, uh, and then I see Voto. So why, what is Voto, and why did it happen, and how? The history behind Volto is, is, yeah, is quite, quite a story, right? So the, the beginning was that uh, yeah, uh, Rob Hitema, was uh, working on that, and one day he came after a summer, and he said, "Yeah, I've been working on this proof of concept. It's called Plone React." And he showed us, as we were like, "Whoa!" What? I mean, as, as usually happens with all the things that that uh, that Rob uh, work on, and it was quite amazing already. Uh, we uh, briefly tried out that that same year, but it was not until. Uh, one year after that it was a little bit more mature and then in uh, kit concept uh timo wanted to try it out for uh, an upcoming project then yeah we made an effort to make it work uh for in fact for for production for make it production video uh and uh it went well we were working almost a whole winter on that and then, yeah, uh, we succeeded. And afterwards, uh, it, the things went, yeah, quite quickly. We had, we had more projects about it, and we we we, we then we uh, made it evolve a little bit because at the beginning, Plum React was very uh, raw. It was like, uh, yeah, you had to copy over things all over the place, no uh, extensible story was present and, and everything. And bit by bit, we've been making the ball bigger and bigger and bigger. We made it extensible, we made it uh, pluggable. Uh, we've worked on the theme, on a theme story, theming story. Yeah, and the rest is history, right? Uh, yeah, it's the Volta that we know today and that it's the default UI for Plone 6. Uh, it's interesting I because uh, you mentioned it's the full UI for Plone 6. And uh, I do remember the early days when Volto was in versions like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 9. And all of a sudden, uh, it moved really fast until 16. And 16 is the version that shipped with Plone 6, yes. right? Yep. And... Uh, I tested it, and uh, uh, personally, I'm going to give a, a, a statement here. So uh, I do remember my first Volto project was two years ago, and I, I was never a, I never considered myself a front-end developer. I implemented a site with a Volto at the time 13, or uh, yeah, I believe 13, and it was easy, it worked, and so on, and then uh, 
few weeks ago, I decided, okay, how hard is it going to be to migrate this to Volto 16? And it was easy. Even though, of course, I, I, I know there were many breaking changes in, in things, but for a, for a small, simple project, nothing broke. I was quite impressed. So how do you handle this? Uh, 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 the speed you have with Volto compared to what we had in the old days with Plone, uh, the Plone backend, sorry. And uh, how do you handle that and adding new features and deprecating stuff? The pace, I have to say that the pace was crazy enough. Uh, and and it could have been cra crazier because the ecosystem in the React world is constantly changing and ne it's never green. I mean, it's it's always, yeah, you know what? There's the new, this new uh, shiny thing that we can try and whatever. And we've had a great time to maintain uh, a lot of things, uh, yeah, stable. But yeah, but of course, I mean, things change and, and evolves. And also uh, it's very difficult to make it in one shot, especially when, when, when you're thinking about extensibility and pluggability and because making a framework is hard. I mean, it's something, yeah, that, uh, that one so top uh, yeah, underestimate oh, very often. Right. And I think that was Chris, Chris McDonough once said that this, right? That it's very difficult to make things uh, the right way in one shot. And then it's very difficult once you have it, who has set one thing in a, in a framework that is done like that. And then you have to change it and all the breaking change that, that can become and, and can cause to all the existing projects is very, very difficult. And I have to say that this is uh, this holds true, and it's been difficult. But I think that the breaking, and I know that there are a lot of breakings between nearest, yeah, twelve, thirteen, whatever, and, and sixteen. But I think that all are well thought and the well documented, which is the most important thing. And it has a, a reasoning behind, right? So yeah, we did this and we broke this because this, this and this, and now it's easier because blah, blah, blah. And and yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy <laughs> to hear you saying that, that you haven't much uh, troubles into uh, porting things in uh, for 16, uh, but I know that, that the listing of breaking changes is, is, is long, but... I hope, yeah, that it's not that long and not that hard to <laughs> to update. And and also for new projects, it's it's yeah, the travel is gone, right? So you you start from sixteen and that's it. Yeah. But there's there's one one thing that you taught me, and uh, that was the key to success. Uh, we have the Voto project generator, right, with uh, Yeoman. And then you create a project. And then if you start customizing things and adding code in the project, it becomes harder for you to move from version to version because yeah. the project is a bunch of boilerplate. And uh, I do remember you mentioning to me, you should use a Voto add-on. Yeah. And when you create an add-on, you basically replace the project around and the add-on works. That was the, 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 the thing. And uh, one, one interesting thing, tell me if there was something that you wanted to have in Volto 16 that you were not able due to time constraints or resource constraints to put it there mm -hmm. and it's coming on Volto 17. I don't know if it will be in 17, <laughs> but I hope that it will be soon. One, probably the most easy thing was the, the Quanta toolbar, maybe. Uh, you know, we have we have an upcoming uh, UX, new UX for, for Volto, which is called Quanta. We've talked about it several times already in, the, in some Plum conference and some uh, other gatherings and everything, uh, there is an element that is common in Quanta, which is the Quanta toolbar that is uh, when you are editing, editing blocks, right? And and I think that this will be a, a huge improvement over the UX of Volto. 
and we've been almost almost uh, ready for including it but finally we decided it was a far too big breaking change and that we will yeah uh, add it afterwards it's very it's very um, likely that it uh, will make it into 17 only the, the, the toolbar, not full quanta, right? In quanta, we will start working. We, we, some work has been done uh, to make quanta a reality, but we will really start it during the next, that coming Beethoven sprint that it's happening in Bonn in three weeks. Uh, so May 15 to 19. Exactly. To talk, uh, 2023, of course. So. Yep, exactly. Uh, and uh, quanta will come. Eventually, I'm sure of it. Uh, if I can, uh, I will push for it to happen. Uh, but it won't be in 17, most most probably. But but it will it will happen. Uh, another thing that I'm thrilled also is about the um, um, modernization of the data fetching that we are working on that as well. That will provide a way uh, a, a modern way to to uh, get data from the backend. And also from other places, I mean, from other sources that are not blown back in uh, exclusively. And an, another thing that it will bring is that we will be able to break free from Volto in that regard. And we could also use the a new library that we have in mind that we do not, not only work in Volto, but we'd also be uh, working for other frameworks, even other, uh, um, not, not only, uh, even other platforms as well, like uh, Angular, Solid, or Svelte, whatever you, we, you want to use. And uh, these also, uh, with another project that we have ongoing, that is uh, breaking, yeah, I mean, breaking the components, the, 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 the common components of that, that makes Volto Volto. Like the uh, I don't know the common things break breadcrumbs, hey, header, footer, and things like that. Also make a library out of it, so so you can reuse it out outside. Uh, so you can, for example, uh, have your Next.js site uh, targeting a Plume backend, and also being able to to do that if that, that's what the client or your project requires, right? So yeah, I mean. I think that we have a, a good bunch of things coming uh, in the horizon. That's really cool. And uh, one one thing is, it is, I believe Volto 17 is already in alpha, so I can use in my project, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. That's good. And uh, what else comes in Volto 17 at the moment? For now, Volto 17 is, uh, uh, and uh, uh, it's, the new version, it's in alpha uh, since a month or so ago. Uh, it went in there, a breaking change, which entailed the upgrade of uh, the boilerplate. The, 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 um, we had, in both we were using a boilerplate for making the whole uh, thing work, the whole app work, uh, which is called Razzle. We upgraded Razzle to make use of uh, the latest, uh, to, to make use Webpack 5. And also Node 18, because we had a problem with the previous version of Razzle that uh, prevented us to go or to use uh, Node 18 because uh, some issues with, they changed uh, an SSL uh, library in Node itself, then some of the old libraries that work still for uh, Webpack, 5, uh, Webpack 4 were deprecated and couldn't work on Node 18. And then, yeah, we had to make this move, which is a breaking change. But Volto 17 is able to run in Node 18 and Webpack 5 with with everything and all the the uh, yeah the advantages that that brings, right? And uh, so we are now on latest uh, Webpack and latest Node, uh, yeah. And I think yeah, for now there are no much more changes in there uh except the new uh theme declaration in volto itself so now you are able to declare a theme for from uh volto itself as an add-on so you can have easily an add-on that it's a theme and you declare it easily in volto so you don't have to do anything else but placing the add-on in the right place 
So uh, for now, yeah, those are the changes. Probably more will come in, after the Beethoven Sprint. So yeah, it's planned that we will close the release after Beethoven Sprint. So seven, we can say that we will have a new stable 70, Volta 17 after it. That's really good. Uh, I, for, to close this, this video, I want you to basically uh, share why people should be joining Voto, the Voto team and hoping to, uh, helping to make Voto uh, 17, 18 and whatever a reality. Mm -hmm. So it's your time to, to recruit new contributors <laughs> to, to Voto. Oh, what to say? Yeah, we are. We work hard for make uh, the Volto as it is. We work hard on the extensibility and the plugability. I think that, uh, yeah, we are in the, we, we made Volto in the shape that we had at the beginning. Uh, the developer experience, I'd say that it's great. Uh, the things that you can do with Volto, it was never seen before in Blown. Uh, Meaning, I mean, not not on a feature CMS level, but on a UI level, right? So, so uh, it it can cover all the requirements of the UI UX requirements that that the client can can uh, ask you for. Uh, you have access to the whole React ecosystem, which is huge. Uh, all the libraries, um, yeah, I mean. I'll, you, you, you can do almost anything that you have in mind uh, and, or, or you could have in mind with, with uh, Blown 6 and Volto as UI. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, my point of view as a developer is that developing with Volto is a, it's, it's great and it's a pleasure. And I really hope that, uh, that people can at some point think about it because we really put a lot of effort into that. Uh, all the Volto team, all the people that have contributed to Volto uh, to make it the shape that it is today. Um, and yeah, I think, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this, this pitch. <laughs> That's perfect. And uh, I invite all of you watching us to watch the other Volto talks we have. We have many Volto talks about add-ons. We have a talk by Victor uh, about the new way to declare teams in Voto 17. And uh, enjoy the rest of Word Blown Day. And uh, if you are around, just ping us on Discord or on community.blown.org. Thank you all for watching us. Victor, thank you. Thanks, Erico. <laughs> And uh, have a nice Word Blown Day. Bye-bye.